everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan. This is my husband, Jim. And on our program, what we call The Bottom Line is, you want to tell us about it? The, well, it's, it, every, all of life's problems, and pressures, whatever, can be solved by revelation from the Word of God. Yeah, and you know, we used to say this. We used to say, Every natural problem has a supernatural answer. And it does. From our Heavenly Father. Yes, it does. Okay, so, and we always talk about faith in our program because faith would be the most critical issue in your life. That is correct. You know, last year in our church, we had a whole series called Faith School. Mm -hmm. And you know, <laughs> how timely is that? Because, you know, this year has been full of faith challenges. Yes, We've happened. had one after another after another. But anyway, today on our program, what we're going to talk to you about, we call this whole, there's three, three segments to what we're going to do. This being number one, we're going to talk to you about a recipe for success. We're going to talk to you about your heart because we have found out that at the end of the day, it's really all about your heart. It is. That is absolutely the truth because the Bible, and, and we'll go through a lot of these things, but the Bible teaches that whatever condition your heart is in, that's the condition that your life will be in. And I, we're not talking about uh, natural. We're talking about spiritual. Yeah, spiritual heart. So I guess we need to talk about, what when we talk about this, exactly what are we talking about? Well, the heart is the innermost portion of man. The heart is, is, it's, is the what, center. is what, it's the center of our being. It's what you and I contact God with. Right. And the way God contacts us. Yeah, and your heart is even made for believing. Yes, it is. That's where you believe yes, God. Yeah. That's right. But anyway, we're talking about something that, you know, you, you, you would not give much consideration to if you didn't know about it. That's right. And so when you watch the news and when you watch secular television, you're seeing a lot of things that totally disregard this part of, of our be, being, I guess That's is what right. we want to call that. And so, you know, it's so, so vital that, that we regard our heart and understand what an amazing thing our Creator has done in making us with a heart. That's, that's exactly right. You know, <clears throat> you've ever seen people even in the natural world and even in the, in the spirit world, the Christian mm -hmm. world, and you think, boy, I wish I could be like that, or I wish I had what, you know, yeah. it, it, it doesn't come by wishing. No. You can wish for it and never get it. No. It, you know. It's like, it's like a Sort of like a garden. That's, That's what we're going to talk yeah, about yeah, today. You know, so, uh, the most vital principle in your life is a kept heart brings life. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say kept, it's not like you would get a dollar bill and just keep it. Right. It's like you would uh, uh, keep a garden. In. You know, you, you stop and think keep about it. Those of you that have gardens, let me ask you a question. What is the easiest part of having a garden? I know that. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll answer for y'all. Okay. It's planting. Planting. That's yeah. right. The plant. preparation to plant is tough, and then after you get it planted, then the real then work, the work starts. Begins. Because you, so the easiest part is just putting those seeds in the ground. There's, yeah, there's yeah. nothing to that. I mean, but a few days after you put those seed in the ground, you look down there and you think, well, what is that growing? Right. There? <laughs> and you know what it is? It's, it's called weeds. weeds. And the, here's the thing there. about it. Here's the thing about it. You did not plant those weeds when you planted the seed. Mm -mm. The weeds were already there. That's right. Just ready to come up. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and I've noticed in my uh, experience as a gardener. Yeah, you're a real that, gardener. That, the, <laughs> that the, the, the weeds grow a lot faster than the seed that you planted. Yeah. And yeah. so... The, the work, okay. you know, if you have a pretty, I remember back when your daddy used to have a garden. I mean, it was huge. I'm talking, you know, every year I would think, Harold, why in the world? He wanted to feed the, the country. He wanted to, feed, he wanted to feed South Arkansas. But anyway, so every, if you have a garden like that, <clears throat> every day you're going to have to give some attention to that garden. That's right. You have to tend. You have to get your hoe out. Garden. And, and, and get in get rid of the weeds and you have to do it every day because if you let a day two days three days a week go by 
the weeds will take over. Mm -hmm. And right. then and they will choke out the seed that, that you planted. Mm -hmm. That's what they'll do. Okay, so we have a good scripture here. You want to read that in Proverbs chapter 4 for us? I do. This is verse 20, Proverbs 4, 20. My son, give mm -hmm. attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health, health to all their flesh. Verse 23, keep your heart. That's what you said. Yeah, that's what I was keep about. your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you and let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. I like up there in verse 23, keep your heart mm -hmm. and then issues of life. Yeah. Keep your heart, issues of life. Let's listen to that from the Passion Translation. Listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then, as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into every, to the very core of your being. So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. All that you are. All that you are. Okay, it's talking about your heart. We're talking about, you know, what you said a while ago, your innermost being. being. You know, that's, that's, who, that's where you really are, who you really are. That's right. Is right there. Right. Now listen to the Message Bible. Dear friend, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. Concentrate. Learn it by heart. Those who discover these words live, really live, body and soul. They're bursting with health. Mm -hmm. Bursting with bursting health. Bursting with health. That's good. Living Bible says it this way. Above all else, guard your affections, for they influence everything else in your life. Everything else in your mm -hmm. life. They influence everything else in your life. Your affections. Yes. You know, there is a scripture somewhere that talks about how you set your mind, you know, like you set a clock, mm -hmm. you know, and see, most of us in the, in our daily lives are not even considering that these are things that we need to be doing. That's right. You know, yeah. most of us, you know, you just, you just don't think, oh, I need to take care of my heart today. You know, mm -hmm. you just don't. That's right. But anyway, so we're bringing attention to it now so that we'll all be mindful That's right. of that. Read that from the New Living Translation. Okay, now are we talking about right here? Yes. Above all else? Above all else? That's kind of like it's the most important well, thing. Most important, yeah. It says guard your heart for it affects everything you do. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? Every, Ooh, it is. Everything that yeah. you do. It's so amazing. You know, and when you, when you analyze this and when when you start thinking about this, you're going to you're going to begin to understand, you know, how how your heart actually is, you know, setting the tone and the mood and everything in your life. Right. You know, and yeah. But when we read this next verse, Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10, you see some more things about your heart. That's right. This is the one that I really get stuck on. <laughs> you want me to read it? Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. The heart is deceitful above all things. A while ago he said, he said, above all else, guard your heart. And here mm -hmm. he's saying, the heart is deceitful above all things mm -hmm. and desperately wicked who can know it. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. That's good. There you are. It? That's good. So we don't want to think about that our heart might be wicked. No. We, right. we don't like to hear that. But that is really right and, and deceitful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you can pretend to be a certain way for a season. You know, anybody can. 
and then, you know, but eventually what's really inside comes out. That's right. It will, it will eventually come out. Mm -hmm. Depends uh, on when, when the pressure is applied. Mm -hmm. you know, I like to use my, my, my example of toothpaste. The toothpaste. If you, okay. if you squeeze a tube of toothpaste, toothpaste what comes out? Toothpaste comes out. Toothpaste will come out. Yeah. And why is that? Because that's, what that's what's inside. In there. If you squeeze it, then that's what comes out. And yeah. that's the same is true for you and I. When we get squeezed, mm -hmm. whatever is in our heart, it comes will out. Come out. Okay, so, so so we want to avoid that. We yes, want to yes, we like do. like we read in these first scriptures in Proverbs, he was talking about pay attention and give attention. And he was talking about giving attention to his words. Right. And then he said, incline your ear. You know, that, that means like and you've seen people that have a hearing loss and they'll 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 do like mm -hmm. that. But that's what he's talking about when he says, incline your ear. Yep. Be be very aggressive about listening, okay, mm -hmm. to his sayings. And don't let them depart from your eyes. Then it says, keep them in the midst of your heart. So this would be our saving grace for our heart. Would be taking the word of God, just like he said, and constantly thinking about it, saying it. Storing it in our heart. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you, you've got to. Because if you don't, come out. then all those others, the weeds come in. That they will always come in. So we need we need to think about the the heart. See, God searches the heart. Let me let me read us some scripture here from First Samuel, chapter sixteen. Just a little bit of background. Uh, the Lord has told told Samuel, Samuel to go anoint the new king. Right. He said, I want you to go to Jesse's house. And, uh, and, and he said, I have provided myself a king from among his sons. Now, he didn't tell him which one. He no, he said, didn't. He, he said, just from said. From his sons. Now, yeah. this, uh, and so, uh, uh, and Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me, for me, the one that I named to you. Mm -hmm. All right? So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. The elders of the town, trembling at his coming, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Now listen. So Samuel looked at, at his looked oldest at son and said, he's got to be the one. Yep, this is the boy. Verse 7, this is so important. This is so important. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. Now listen to this. Okay, I'm listening. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Mm-hmm. Now, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is The amazing. Lord looks at the heart. So we need to understand this. I have a, a, a good example. I was listening to it. Uh, see, God knows everything there is to know about us. Yeah. The Bible says that he knows the thoughts that you think before you think them. The Bible says mm -hmm. that he knows the word on your tongue before it ever comes out. Wow. Everything, everything about you, God already knows. In fact, he knew it. Before the world began. Yeah. Well, this is just too much to even. That, that's right. Consider. I, remember, I, mean, I was listening mind. to a tape. This has been oh, a long time ago, 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago. I don't remember now, but it was a, a preacher. <clears throat> so he said that one Sunday morning he was sitting there in church. He was mm -hmm. sitting up on the platform and he was looking out across the congregation and he was thinking, wow, these people really look nice, really yeah. look good, so forth and so on. And, he was just kind of, you know, just kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, well, he said, you think they look nice, don't you? And he said, well, yes, Lord, don't, I don't mind saying so. They, yeah, they really do. He said, well, would you like to see what I say? And so he thought, well, sure, Lord. So he said, and just, just an instant, everything changed. He said, there were people sitting out there that had snakes sitting in their laps. <sighs> there were people out there that were drunk and falling under the pews. There were people out there that uh, 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 were gossiping. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that he said that just showed him that our hearts are just as open to God as our outward appearance is to those around them. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah, that is true. So, you know, the, the, the guarding the heart is so, so important. Why does God choose some people and not others? I bet it has to do with the heart. It could be. But you think about this. There were lots of people that Abraham was not the only man that lived in Ur of the Chaldees. He nope. wasn't. David was not the only shepherd boy in Israel. But I believe that it has to do with the person's heart. Mm-hmm. What Can my heart be receptive to what God wants? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Bible says about <clears throat> David, that, that God said about him that David, a man after my own heart, who will do all that I command him. That's right. So it is about the heart. It is about the heart. And, and you know, and, and you, you stop thinking about this. One of my favorite scriptures, and I believe it's one also one of your favorite scriptures is Joshua chapter one, verse eight. Now here, mm-hmm. a little bit, little bit of background for this. The, the children of Israel are getting ready to go into the promised land. Okay. Moses is, has just died and now Joshua is in charge. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine? Mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, after all the things that the Lord had accomplished through Moses, now yeah, all of a sudden I... you're gonna take his place. Oh no. <laughs> but anyway, here's what, here's what the Lord told Joshua. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you, Joshua, you, Joshua, will make yourself successful and you will be in hell. Mm -hmm. And everything you do will prosper. But who who was it up to? It wasn't up to God. It was up to Joshua. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's, and see, he just said it in different words there about meditating the word day Day and and night. night. See, that goes right back to what we said at the beginning when we were talking about keeping our hearts. In Proverbs chapter 4, he was saying, give attention to my words. Every day. And it's not, it's not, I saw a thing on a church marquee the other day. And it said, your strength will be small if you only work out on Sunday. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that is, that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. So, okay, so, here's a good scripture in Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. It says this, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Okay, now see, here's a good place even to to think about this. You know, a while ago you mentioned how David was not the only shepherd boy Mm -hmm. in Israel, but yet God chose him to be king. Okay, and then, then, you know, you you told us about how God even pointed out one day that David was a man after his own heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yet we know there were a lot of imperfections in David's life. There's no doubt about that. Okay, and see, a while ago, you showed us how when uh, uh, Samuel went to anoint the king, how God said to him, you know, I really don't care so much how they look on the outside. I'm not so interested in that. And yet, Jim, that's what we tend to the most in our lives. That's right. It's what we look like on the mm-hmm. outside. But it's not about that. It's about the heart. <clears throat> and so even though David fell short, in his life and made a lot of mistakes, his heart was always fixed on God. Somehow, he always managed to keep his heart right. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, that, that we should have some sort of, of um, encouragement in that for our lives because certainly we're not perfect either. No. You know, I mean, we can all look around and say, man, I messed up here, I messed up there, I've done all of this. How can I ever really be okay with God? Well, it wasn't about that in the first place. No. It was about your innermost being. And you can keep it pure by attending to the words of God. That's right. I mean, and it all goes back right. to it's, it's, it's something 
that has to be done every, every day. day. And you just know, just like that garden you talked about. I know, yeah. and I know you. You know, you're out there and you say, "Well, look, I'm busy. I've got, yeah. I've got uh, three kids." I've got, uh, you know, for the lady, for the lady, she says, I'm busy. I've got three kids. I've got a job. I've got a husband. I've got this, that, and other. And the husband says, look, I have to get up, and I, I work 12 hours a day, and this, mm -hmm. that, and other. And you're telling me that I need to, to do this. <laughs> Take care of my heart. <laughs> but I, we're, yeah. we're not talking about you have to spend hours. Mm -mm. We're talking about spending the time that you can. Yeah. Five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, mm -hmm. whatever you can. I mean, I've noticed about myself that during the course of a day, I waste a lot of time. Really? I waste a lot of time. Yeah. You know, and I, th I think everybody w could probably uh, yeah. uh, identify with that, you know. Now, you know, uh, uh, doing Facebook all, all day long, that's pretty much a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, all, all these other, all these social media is pretty much a waste of time. If we spent some of that time uh, uh, meditating in the Word of God, doing what it says there, uh, attending attending to the Word of God, I believe that it would change our lives. Yeah. And, you know, attitude is everything. Oh, yes. Attitude, you yeah. know, and, and that even springs out of your heart, your attitude. Yeah. But, you know, if you can understand what we're, what we're saying here, not a great deal of time, but... Take time, take time, That's and right. and say, okay, I've got, I see ten minutes right here that I could use, that I could sit <laughs> down, and I am gonna take my Bible and I am going to incline my ear. <laughs> I'm gonna really read something and I'm gonna pay attention mm -hmm. to what it's saying. That's all we're talking about. We're not talking about becoming a monk and living in a monastery, no, and no, no, you know, no, no, no. you don't have to do that. I had I had somebody tell me one time, you know, they were having all kinds of problems and this, that, and the other, and, and, and I was trying to, you know, talk, talk to them about this very thing, about, well, you know, maybe you need to spend... Yeah, just, just, just work know, on this a little bit. You know, yeah. Spend some time in prayer every day, spend some time reading and studying the Bible every day, and, and their answer to me was, well, you know what, I just hadn't got time for all that. Oops. <laughs> And so I thought. Uh, here, my my thought was, well, you're going to continue having what you what you have then. Mm -hmm. If if that's your attitude, yeah. then what you're having now is what you will continue to have if you're not willing to change. Yeah, and see, it's you know a lot of people. Well, we see them every day. They're multitasking. Yes. You know, they're they're eating their lunch and they're catching up on Facebook mm -hmm. or they're uh, watching a television program, or you know maybe you're. You know, I know one day I was playing with my granddaughter, so we were multitasking. We were making cookies that day, and so we put, like, the butter in the mixer, and it's mixing while we go play babies, okay? And then we come back and we put something else in. But that may be how you have to do this. Mm -hmm. Just take the time that you have. You know, if you've got five minutes, say, okay, you know, today I'm going to really be sure that I read my proverb today, you know, and... That's right there is an excellent way to start because the book of wisdom right in the middle of the Bible has 31 chapters. You can read a chapter a day in, in five minutes or less, actually. Right. And then you've got something right there handy that you, you know where it was because you know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You can go back to that and you can think about that through the day and it doesn't take that long. That's right. And, and you're, what you're doing is you are tending your heart. That's, right. That's what you're doing. All right, That's Matthew good. 5, 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Mm -hmm. But now listen to the Passion Translation. This is really good. What bliss you experience when your heart is pure, for then your eyes will open to see more and more of God. More and more of God. Yeah. Isn't that good? That's what's going to happen. So you have to keep your heart clean. You can't let you can't have bitterness in your heart. Mm -hmm. You can't have unforgiveness in your heart. Mm -hmm. You got to keep it clean. Keep your heart clean. clean. I mean, I I know people. One particular person that I'm thinking about uh, um, is, is one of the, still has unforgiveness towards one of their parents that's been dead for thirty years. Hmm. You know, and you think well. Yeah. People do that, Let though, that go. Yeah, 
They do. So we need we need to understand that. So we're talking about we're talking about your heart, guarding your heart. It's the most important thing that we can do. Most important mm -hmm. thing that we can do. It is. Uh, uh, John fourteen seven says this. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Uh, you will read. Uh, I'll read it from the Passion Translation. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said, Now here comes a true son of Israel, an honest man with no hidden motive. Okay, so that, that really describes this whole thing about having deceit in your heart. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, no hidden motive. Yeah. I mean, well, hadn't you ever been around somebody and they would st start some sort of conversation or they would initiate mm -hmm. something and your, your first thought was, well, what's your motive behind this? <laughs> you know, why, why are you doing this? Sometimes you do that. Yeah, you do. <clears throat> and, yeah. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's warranted and sometimes it's not. Right. That's true, yeah. That's really, uh, and so you've got another, another thing here about guile. You know, that's a, that's not a, a common word that we would no, use. No. And so the definition is doubleness of thought, speech, action, especially something of one's true intentions <clears throat> by deceptive words. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. So That's we don't want to have that kind of a heart. No, we don't. So <laughs> let's just summarize here in the few minute, few seconds that we have left here. What is the most important thing you do? Guard your, your heart. heart. For out of it For flow the issues. issues of life. For out of it, it sets the boundaries of your life. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Well, Susan, I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, you can contact us here at the bottom line. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to hear from you. Just say, I like the show. Mm -hmm. And if, if we, would, we certainly thank you for your continued financial support. We appreciate the support you give us each month. And remember this, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. indeed. And you should know the truth, and the, the truth, truth shall set, set you free. free.